There it is. Got some. <laughs> We're going to start out with lift him up. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we, as we come into your house today, uh, Lord, we just acknowledge that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And, and Lord, that you, you should be exalted above all else. And so we want to just say you are our God and you are the reign, reigning king of the universe. And so, Lord, we just want to honor you and praise you this morning. And so, Lord... Our world is in such chaos right at the moment. Lord, we just really need your spirit overflowing, not only in this church, but in all churches, in all your family, Father, that your love would be shown uh, in all circumstances to all people. And so, Lord, we just uh, come before you and ask you to just to teach us what you want us to know, uh, deliver your word to our hearts, and we give you the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 And let's sing as the deer.
serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And boy, we need that reading the way it's going this day and age. So, we'll get back to seeing we are called to be God's people.
got missions today? Oh. I had that said. Well, good morning again, and uh, you know, yes, yeah, sir, be nice if we ever get back where everybody comes to church. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm really grateful for the for the few of you that actually will challenge out, and I, I, as much as we can, we try to make sure that we stay safe, but still, we miss so many people that aren't here this morning, and I'd be so glad to, when that changes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Today is Mission Sunday, uh, and uh, the vinyl fencing did arrive this last week. It is here, and, uh, and we've been in the process of tearing down our old fence, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll start a process of putting up the new fence here. Hopefully we'll get it all done. Uh, I got my tractor up here, we've got a bunch of posts to pull out, and, and then we get enough bodies to kind of help try to put up the fence. We'll see if we can get it done. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're supposed to be praying for our nation with 30 days of prayer. Uh, and you got some information on that. Um, also, uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday is our, is the second Tuesday of the month. And so it's a board meeting. Uh, I got a surprise last Thursday because I got a guy called up and he said, hey, Carl, I want, want to know when you want to have your, can I come to your meeting tonight? And it was for Thursday, for our American Legion meeting. And I said, well, we meet on the second Thursday. And he said, this is the second Thursday. <laughs> and I went, uh. <laughs> yeah, when, when the first falls in the middle of the week like that, it throws us off sometimes. But uh, so the, Second Thursday happened to come before the second Tuesday. It's just the way it works out. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow uh, Terry to talk about missions, but just as a reminder, 4 o'clock Tuesday afternoon here at the church is board meeting. And also, uh, there is some refreshments over here. We, not, we used to do hugs and howdies, and we're not doing that now. There is some water and some juice and some cookies, and so... Any time during the soul service, if you feel that you'd like something, just take your time and go over and grab something, bring it back, sit down. That way it won't be a conglomeration of people. So just any time you feel like it during the service, don't hesitate. Go get yourself something to munch on or get yourself something to drink. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Terry for her mission. Good morning, everyone. In my reading this past week, John 16.33 came to my attention. With our world full of conflict, sickness, and stress, God's word is comforting. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God has a plan, and when we feel low or discouraged, we need to stand firm and trust in him. Praise God. October missions... This month is Mission Priority One. Nazarene Missions International has four objectives of Priority One. Number one is prayer for missions. Number two, learning about missions. Number three, challenging children and the youth to be involved in missions. And four is giving to missions. The objective of prayer is to encourage people to pray for all efforts of the world, evangelism. Mission priority requirements are that the church will pray for missions. As most of you know, our church has prayer requests in our bulletin every week. A prayer request box in the foyer and a prayer chain for things that come up during the week that need prayer. Learning about missions, global awareness, to inform people of the world's needs and what the church is doing to meet those needs. The Church of the Nazarene has a mission family appointed to us to pray for. Our mission family is the Mason family. They're, in, they're serving in a hospital in Papua New Guinea, and his specialty is healing club feet of children. So if you would please pray for our missionary family, the Masons, they would really appreciate it. Um, you can. P.O. 
people can write letters to them or send money or just to meet their needs. Children and youth, their objective is to challenge children to youth to learn about the and participate in missions of the church and to respond to God's call. Giving to missions, objective to raise funds for the missionaries' outreach. Mission Priority One is a program with a purpose. Believers and of people around the world who have not accepted Christ as their Savior are dependent on our prayer bringing them to God's throne daily. Global awareness, learning about what's, excuse me, learning about events around the world and how they affect eternity. Children and youth being willing to participate and serve at any age. Giving, providing resources to tell them about God's love. If you would like information on the Nazarene Missions International, the website is lowercase letters www.nazarenemissions.org. Feel free to check out that website. If God has spoken to your heart, please donate to Mission Priority One. You may place it in an envelope and write Missions Priority One on it. Updating our Operation Christmas Child. I see Marlene has all the boxes made. And we have stuff downstairs, but we still need some items. And bring my notebook up here. But, um, there are different items that we need, so if you could get with me, I'll let you know what those are, or read on your paper that Marlene made. There's some of those. I know we don't need toothbrushes or soap or brush rags or things like that. So, but anything else, children's toys, uh, like stuffed animals, or um, we could use some more balls and different things, so feel free to do that. If you can't um, donate something, or if you'd like to donate money, just see Tony or I, and we will um, shop for you. So with that, thank you, and have a wonderful day. Go ahead. Uh, before we get started, I noticed today is Clergy Appreciation Day, and I thought, in the day we're living, we want Carl to know we appreciate him. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's, it's been 20 years. Uh, I don't know it'll be another 20 years, but uh, uh, it, we're going to continue on, and, and I appreciate everybody. Yeah, those boxes, there's a hundred of them over there, I think, uh, that we filled up the last two years. And so this year has been kind of a tough year, and we haven't all been here. Uh, and so uh, if you can contribute that, anything you can, and it, is it still going to be like $7 a box for shipping? It's nine. Nine dollars a box. <laughs> they had nine hundred dollars just to ship them, mm -hmm. and, and and that's for us to come up with that money as long as well as filling the boxes. So we got until about the middle of November. So we only got another month to go. Uh, so uh, whatever you can do would be greatly appreciated. And with that, we're going to take our morning offering, and I'm going to ask John to come up. And uh, as as we get prepared for that, if you're a guest. Uh, we're not trying to get into your pocketbook. Uh, if you're a guest, we just are glad you're here and don't feel any compulsion. This is our way of supporting a, our our Lord's Church here in Parkdale and around the world. So. Let's pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, again, thank you so much for your your constant love and your faithfulness always uh, in helping us uh, to attend church and helping us to draw closer to you uh, and helping us to uh, find the bodies to help put up the fence, fill the boxes, everything that we can do for you, Lord. We know that uh, your strength will get it done. 
And so, Lord, as we give back to you a portion of the blessings that you've given to us, would you please accept the, the offering and use it to grow your kingdom here and around the world. We thank you and praise you in that wonderful name of your son we ask it. Amen. <laughs> People need the Lord in this one, all because of God's amazing grace.
As we continue on with a uh, look at some of the Old Testament characters, uh, this one's Nehemiah, uh, and uh, big problems can be solved. You know, one of the things I can say for sure about problems, there's probably not a one of us that doesn't have at least one. Uh, you know, I have problems, and you have problems. Everybody in this room has to deal with some type of problem, and probably right now. Uh, you know, our problems sometimes fall into different categories. I mean, sometimes it's family. Uh, sometimes it's uh, problems at work or, or physical problems. I mean, uh, the older we get, the more those physical problems seem to kind of accentuate themselves. Uh, sometimes they're spiritual problems and, or financial problems. And this has been one of those years where financial problems have, have been just uh, awesome for some people and, I mean, in, a, in a bad way. Uh, and, and probably even more problems than that. 
you know, some of the problems can be minor, and others can probably just be enough to just make you want to cash it in. Uh, and some of you seated here today probably have problems that you're dealing with uh, that you just see no way out. I know Linda was just talking about people that hadn't had to pay their rent, but apparently that's going to be coming due, and I don't know how, you, if you're not getting the money to pay the rent, you're going to be able to pay it all back at one time. Uh, but then again, on the same token, landlords are sitting there saying, I want our money in, and I don't know where they're going to get it. Uh, you know, but as a pastor, I want you to know that I don't have the answer to all the problems in the world, uh, as if you really thought I ever did. But, you know, I do believe that God's Word can help us to deal better with the problems that we have. Uh, Nehemiah was a man. Uh, with a huge problem, and he dealt with it in a godly manner. And I believe his story will kind of help us with the problems that we have. Uh, Nehemiah was a Jewish man, and he had been in captivity. Uh, he was a long ways from home. He was serving the king in Persia, and because of the fact that God was with him, he had gotten uh, fairly high up in the in the Persian control and. And he was a person that might be able to help his people. Uh, Nehemiah was, a, was in, the, in the service of the king when his brother came to him with some very bad news. Uh, and in, in, the, in the first uh, few verses, his brother actually tells him that the people in Jerusalem the walls had been torn down. Now, Nehemiah had been gone for quite some time. Uh, the walls had been torn down. The city was in ruins. The people were without hope. Uh, and there was just lots of turmoil going on in this city. Uh, and, and something needs to be done. Now, it's hard to imagine much worse news that Nehemiah could have had. You know, his own people... Uh, were in deep trouble. Even though he'd been away for a long time, you know, the walls of the entire city had come down, been burnt down, tore down, and, and they left the people unprotected from the forces that wished to do them harm. Uh, and here is Nehemiah, employed by this pagan king, miles and miles away. And yet he still has a burning desire to solve the problem of his people. And so let's look what he did in keeping in mind of his example as we, as we use uh, his way of dealing with problems. And the first thing that we, we look at is that Nehemiah decided, uh, I'm going to skip that right now, and Nehemiah evaluated the problem. Now, the way to evaluate a problem uh, that you might have to deal with even today is to ask a simple couple of questions. You know, concerning the problem. And then act upon your answers. Well, first of all, you have to know exactly what the problem is. Now, that's not always an easy answer. Uh, well, let's say that you have uh, ten bags of garbage accumulating at your house. Inside your house. And the sooner that you discover that, that there's a zillion flies that are flying around in your house. Now, I, a few years ago, uh, the neighbors had horses at my house, and, uh, and they, we had the motorhome out there, and we'd be gone on a trip, we'd come back, and the next thing you know, the motorhome was full of flies. Well, they land on your food, they land everywhere in the place, uh, and it's really kind of book, you're just sitting there going like this all the time. Uh, and, and so you go out and you buy a fly swatter. Well, when there's a zillion flies, I mean, you can swat all day long and not get all the flies done. And so you can hang up fly traps and all that kind of good stuff, and you may get some of them, even if you get a bug zapper. Uh, you know, we have one of those little electronic fly, uh, it actually looks like a tennis racket. And, but I mean, tell you, it's hard to get a fly with that little bugger. Uh, but no matter what lengths you go to get rid of the flies, they just keep seeming to come. Why is it? Well, because your problem's not the flies. 
Your problem is the garbage that's sitting in the house. If you get rid of the garbage, the flies are going to go away. So instead of swatting flies, you need to take the garbage out and get rid of it. Now, so, you know, in evaluating problems, Look not at just what the results of the problem are, uh, but you need to know what the problem actually is, you know, the actual root of the problem. And, you know, I'm not evaluating the results of the problem, but, but what the problem actually is. I mean, you know, for Nehemiah, the problem was the people in Jerusalem were, were unprotected. Uh, and and he would find out that their their morale was really low as on top of that. Uh, in addition, he had to acknowledge in a prayer that he and his people all had sinned against God. They weren't doing what God had wanted them to do, and they needed to get their lives back on track. And and for you, your problems might be not really easily discerned. I mean, you might have to take a little time to trace back the source of the problem. Uh, you know, and, and like some people I know, they have problems financially. Well, just to say my problem is financial isn't really cutting it. You have to look at finding out why you're having problems financially. What are you doing or not doing that's creating a financial problem? And, and a lot of people just live their life just doing, doing, doing without really looking at what may be causing it. I mean, I talked with one of my daughters one Christmas time and we were flying back from Arizona and and she went, she made a kind of comment as we're driving down the road towards the airport, I'm still paying off Christmas from two years ago. And I, I just kind of looked and I went, you're paying off Christmas from two years ago? Yeah. And I said, how many credit cards do you have? <clears throat> and she said, well, they keep sending me those in the mail. I said, sweetie, you need to get rid of some of the credit cards. And then if you're paying off debt from two years ago, you're never going to catch up. Well, we got to the airport and there was tears and goodbyes and all that good stuff. And I thought, my daughter never really cried when we leave. Well, I found out about two hours later when I got home that she was mad because she thought I rebuked her uh, for spending so much money. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, just the fact that we're having financial problems and we're broke doesn't mean that we're really on a major deal. We need to look at what has caused that problem in the first place. And, and it's it's because maybe you've accumulated too much debt. Uh, maybe you've lost your job. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people out of job right now. Or maybe there's something else. I mean, sometimes people end up loaning money to family members that doesn't get paid back, and, and that's kind of the reason. But whatever it is, you need to discover what the root of the problem is. And, and then go from there. Uh, and next, uh, you have to decide does the problem really affect me? And what I mean is to determine that is if, does this particular problem, is it the kind of problem that I have a stake in? I mean, uh, or is it something that God really wants me to be involved in in the first place? We have to make those kind of decisions. I mean, Nehemiah didn't live in Jerusalem. He didn't live with the people. Uh, and he wasn't even there when the walls got knocked down. And, and he could have continued to live in, in fairly prosperous times as at, employed by the, the king of Persia uh, and not worried about it. But he determined the, the problem did affect him in a big way. Why? Because he loved those people. He loved Jerusalem and he loved God. And he knew that God wanted him to do something about it. And at the same time, some of us worry and fret over things that we have no control over. And I'm sure that nobody here ever does that. 
uh, I, I know people that fret over every little thing, regardless of whether or not they have any control over it. But if you don't have any control over it, why worry about it? I mean, the Bible says, you know, what, what, what are you going to accomplish by worry? Uh, but, you know, uh, sometimes we just continue to waste our time trying to solve everyone else's problems while our own one resolved. And I, and I know people that do that. They, they'll, they'll help everybody else out except themselves. And, and, and I know that's somewhat true with different people like electricians. Uh, my brother-in-law was an electrician. Uh, he could fix everybody's house, but there was problems in his own house. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want to like, uh, find the time to fix those things because he was busy doing it for everybody else. Uh, but you know, make sure that the problem is really your problem. And, and, and then, uh, number two, we need to not only evaluate the problem, but we need to share the problem. Uh, if you're like me, this is probably one of the hardest steps to take. I'm the kind of person that initially tries to find the problem myself and tries to fix those problems by myself. Uh, the problem with that is the longer I hold on to a problem, the worse the problem seems to get. And, and so, you know, I hope that you're ready to learn uh, with me that if we're going to solve our problems, we need to be able to share our problems with others. Now, how, how are we going to do that? I mean, how are we going to share problems? Well, first of all, we don't keep them to ourselves. Uh, first of all, just we've been talking about prayer this, this month, share it with God. Let God know that you have a problem. He knows it already. And so why keep it from him? Uh, immediately, Nehemiah receives word that the walls of Jerusalem were torn down. And he turns to God in prayer and fasting. In verses 4 uh, through 7, we hear these words. And if it's small up here, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'll try to work on that. It is kind of small. Uh, I'll try to split it up a little bit. Uh, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws that you gave your servant Moses. Now, Nehemiah's name means the Lord comforts. And it's obvious that his willingness to share with God was, was not only for God's help, but also to acknowledge his own failures and to seek the presence of God as he dealt with the problem at hand. I mean, let's face it, why is he in captivity? He's in captivity because the Israelites didn't follow what the Lord had commanded and the Lord put them into captivity. And then Nehemiah continues his prayer in verses 10 and 11. And he says, They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to this, the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in re revering your name. Give your servants success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. 
You know, no matter what problem that you're dealing with, the first person that you need to share your problem with is the Almighty God. Uh, Psalm 55.22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God wants nothing more than to hear your voice telling Him, Lord, I can't handle this by myself. I need your help. He wants nothing more than to give you His assurance that He is always with you. And wants nothing more than to give you the comfort as you deal with the problems of life. And we live in a fallen world. And so problems of life will come to each and every one of us. Uh, you know, sometimes it seems like I live a real blessed life while other people don't. That doesn't necessarily mean that they sin and I don't. It just means our circumstances are different. We all need God to be with us and to help us through these times. But you will not know the full blessings of God's comfort. You will not. I guarantee you will not know it until you begin to unload your burdens to Him. Take your problems to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to help. And the next thing is, share the problems with people that God leads you to. I mean, that's part of the reason we have a church body, is we help one another, and we sustain one another. And when I need help, somebody's there to lift me up. And when you need help there, we're here to lift you up. Nehemiah knew that he would not be able to solve the problem in Jerusalem without receiving permission from the king. I mean, let's face it, he is really a slave in the king's palace, uh, this king that he served. He needed to be able to take a long leave of absence. I mean, he needed to be there for a, a long time. It wasn't just something that could happen overnight. And, and the one that turned out to be 12 years long. Now, that's probably more than more problems than we have. If it takes us 12 years to put that fence up, we got a real problem. Uh, if, if it takes us 12 years to get the rusty water out of the, the basement faucet, we got a real problem. Uh, but uh, at least that little problem, I know, can get fixed in a matter of a day without a whole lot of problems. We're worth. You know, Notice again, at the end of his initial prayer, Nehemiah says, Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was his cupbearer to that king. You know, we don't have to read the whole story today, but the results of the Persian king not only granted Nehemiah permission to leave, but he sent along with Nehemiah letters of protection that surround to the surrounding governors, plus giving him building materials that he needed uh, to be able to rebuild those walls. And all that stuff helped Nehemiah because God put it on the heart of that king. I don't think that king would have done it if God's presence hadn't been there. Uh, and I think that the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, is that God leads us sometimes to other people who can help us to solve the problems that we have. It's a little bit like this fence out there. I can't, I mean, I can probably do it by myself, but God's going to bring people that's going to help to put that fence up so that we can get back to having a, a nice looking fence out around our church, something that we can be proud of. Uh, Romans 5, uh, 12, 5, uh, okay, I mean, back up a little bit. Uh, and, and this is especially true, uh, uh, this is especially true in the church. I mean, we are here really to help each other. We are here to help each other. I'm going to say that one more time. We are here to help each other. 
in every possible way. And, and if we look at Romans 12, 5, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So you don't belong just to yourself. And, and seeking other, help from others isn't something that we have to be ashamed of. In fact, you'll find out that others are dealing with some of the same problems that we are. And you'll be able to help each other out. Because sometimes the problem that I might be dealing with is the same problem that you're dealing with. And maybe I've got part of it figured out at this point and I can help you. And maybe all of a sudden you have some kind of help that can help me. And we help each other. Ecclesiastics 4, verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls down and has no one to help him up. John was there for me this last week. Because we was taking down fence posts, fence planks, and we had to take screwdrivers. So he was taking the tall screws out. I was taking the bottom screws out. Well, that meant I was down on my hands and knees. <laughs> I needed his help just to be able to get up. Uh, we help one another. And so, you know, if you're alone in your problems today, as hard as it might be for you, you need to find someone that you can trust to share your problems with. It doesn't have to be everybody, but there's somebody that can help you. Nehemiah began to, by requesting help from the king, but he continued to receive help from many, many people. In fact, when you add them all up, Nehemiah helped, received help from 42 different groups of people in solving the problem and rebuilding that wall. He knew that if the problem was going to get solved, he'd have to rely, first of all, on God. And then he'd have to rely on people, second of all, to help get it done. Uh, and, and the last, the main thing is that we need to solve the problem. And I say this realizing that not every problem really has a solution. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the solution is having to resolve to admit that there really isn't. There really isn't a satisfactory solution. And deciding that with God's help, we can live with that. But for most problems, there is a solution. It might or might not be an immediate solution, but there is a solution somewhere down the road. And sometimes it, it takes a long time to get things done. If you'll read through the rest of Nehemiah, you'll see that, that in time, this problem was wonderfully solved. And the city wall was rebuilt in an amazing 52 days of nonstop construction. Well, if they can build a wall in 52 days, we ought to be able to build a, a, a fence in a couple weeks, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. It will get done, I guarantee you, because the, the Lord gave us the money to get it done. We got the stuff here, and the Lord's going to help us get it done. But, you know, for most of our problems, the following three steps will help us to attempt a resolution. First of all, and, and it's like everything else, you, can, you solve the problem by continued reliance on God. And uh, I've told this before, and I'll get it all again because it was a good reminder for everybody. When Frank and I were putting that bathroom together on this corner of the building after the contractor left us with nothing and the county was on our case, uh, we were able to get it done. The thing is, is that we weren't always with the mindset because as guys, I mean, we can do this ourselves, you know? And we'd get busy and we'd start doing it and, and we'd hit thumbs with hammers and we'd do this and that and, and it was like, maybe we ought to stop and pray. And what, maybe we ought to do that every job, every day every day 
But, you know, we sometimes just didn't do that. And God would help remind us with hands that were burning from the hot in the metal roofing and stuff like that. Take time to pray. And, when, and I guarantee you, the minute we did that, things started going better. And so always rely on the Lord. Uh, we really want to have God in the midst. We want to have God in the midst of it, no matter how long it takes. We need to have God there. You see, when some men were, came opposing Nehemiah's work on the wall, he said to them in Nehemiah 2.20, he said, I answered them by saying, the God of heaven, will give us success. We are his servants and we'll start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim to historic right to it. You know, I've counted at least 14 times in the 13 chapters where he and his team explicitly rely on God in prayer. Two chapters of the book contain almost nothing but prayers to God. Nehemiah knew, as we all need to learn, that if we're going to resolve problems of life, God needs to be an integral part of that process. The world doesn't understand that outside the walls of this church, of churches. In general, they, they just go do it, get some friends to do it, but we know that God has to be involved. If we're going to have success in this life, in this country, God needs to be involved. You can also solve your problems by taking whatever steps are necessary. For Nehemiah, this including organizing a mass number of people to do particular things. It included arming the people against those that wanted to attack him. It involved bringing people back to a proper obedience and worship of God. I mean, with the fence out there, you can't just, we, we we're not just going to go out there and start putting everything together. I mean, there's instructions on how to best put that together. We need to lay out a pattern. We need to figure out where the holes are going to be for all the posts. We've got to have the materials. I mean, we got all the fencing materials, but we got to have concrete. Uh, we're going to probably have to have some utensils for digging the holes and, and filling in more. We may even need more dirt to fill in some of the holes that we have. You have to lay out steps in order to solve the problems, whatever those problems might be. And those were the steps that, that Nehemiah needed to take to solve his problem. Obviously, your problem's not the same as the one of Nehemiah. Uh, but you and I need to take necessary steps to solve the problems uh, that we face or, or the problem's not going to get solved. Consider uh, what Penn Racket Sports did. In, in the early uh, 2000, they, they had tennis balls. And the sale of tennis balls was just going to get in flat and they needed to come up with something else uh, and so uh, Penn is now stamping tennis balls with the Purina dog food logo on it. Penn cut the price of the tennis balls from 80 cents to two dollars and fifty cents a piece as a marketing them as a natural fetch toy for the dogs. <laughs> now it's a profitable way uh, to take steps to solve their problems. Uh, not only were people buying the toys, and, and I was just down at Anderson's uh, Tribute Center with Gene this week, and Jack has this little little dog, he's the cutest little dog, and, uh, and of course he, he wants treats, and so he was, out in Gene's lap to get treats. Well, we were sitting there and we was talking and all of a sudden I heard squeak, 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 squeak. And he had this little rubber ball with a squeaker on it. And he was trying to get our attention because he wanted some treats. Uh, you know, I, we have to come up with ways 
of solving our problems. And let's say our, our problem is in a marriage. And, and I've identified that much of the problem stems from me not being the kind of husband that I need to be. And so what steps would I have to take? Well, number one, I'd have to be a good husband. And how do I become a good husband? Well, it starts by becoming that kind of husband, a kind of husband that God wants. Maybe I need to start reading some books on how to be a good husband. Maybe I need to start reading some scriptures that, that God talks about how to, how to be the kind of loving husband, to be a good counsel, to be a... Uh, maybe I have a mentor friend that, that can help me uh, to learn how to take better steps to be a husband. Uh, too many of us, unfortunately, too many of us uh, know what the steps needed should be taken, but we refuse to take them. Sometimes we know that we're not doing the right things, but for whatever reason, we just uh, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. And sometimes we go our backs. I, I think that's a lot of times what happens in marriages that don't don't make it. Is that usually it starts off with little things that build up to a, a big thing, and it's never really a big thing if you've done away with all the little things. You probably wouldn't have the big thing. And so at some point in time, they just bow our backs and say, "I ain't going to do it no more." And uh, God wants, I want you to know that God wants to help us. He wants to help us to offer ourselves and He wants to be involved. He wants us getting involved in the process along with Him. We need to seek God and seek His help and then get involved in the process. If you're not going to take steps to, to, to solve your problems, your problems are never going to go away. Uh, and then lastly, we need to solve uh, our problems by staying focused, focused on the task at hand. Now, as you're writing that down, think about it like this. Imagine you have a bundle of sticks bound tightly. And I'd say maybe a bundle of sticks about like that. And someone asks you to break that bundle of sticks. And, and so you attempted to, to break the bundle of sticks and, and, and normally I can take a stick and break it over my knee. Well, with a bundle of sticks, you try to break it over your knee, it's going to hurt. In fact, it might not even be possible to break that bundle of sticks. And after hours of trying and trying and trying, and your hands get sore and your knee gets sore, uh, and your disposition's like, I'm ready to give up. But let's say you take a, a different tactic. The person challenged you to break the bundle of sticks. But suppose you untie the bundle of sticks. And you proceed to break each one of them individually. You might find it much easier to break the bundle of sticks. You know, your, your problems are a little bit like a bundle of sticks. If you try to fix everything at once, you may not end up fixing anything at all. You may actually undermine your chances of, of, of success and frustrating yourself in the process. Sometimes it's difficult to untie the bundle of sticks. But our problems seem to be interconnected that we can't see how to solve one without solving them all. If we just untie the bundle of sticks and figure out a way to break everything, we can take one step at a time and get the problem solved. And with focus, solutions become easier. One solution leads to another. And so, after you break the first stick, you gain a little confidence. And then maybe you try two sticks. And then you get going until you got momentum going and you solve your problem one stick at a time. If Nehemiah teaches us anything, it's to have a streamlined view towards problem solving. Uh, first of all, we need, we need to, to realize and admit to ourselves that we can't fix the whole world's problems at once. 
let alone fixing every single problem that we have. We can't fix every single problem that we have all the time. Focus on the task at hand and continue to focus until the problem gets resolved. And so, as we conclude, just a couple of things I would just like to mention. No matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter how young you are, you will face problems throughout life. That is just a fact of life. That's a fact that is true in every single one of us. How, how you deal with problems that will come will help determine the outcome of our entire lives. How you deal with the problems that come will de help to determine the outcome of your whole life. In fact, in fact, if you learn to deal with problems in a godly fashion, you may still have some down days. But your life as a whole, your life as a whole, will be one of triumph and satisfaction. Because God helps keep our spirits up. God helps us to look at the good things in life, not always concentrating on the bad things in life. And lastly, Nehemiah teaches us that at the center of our universe, God resides, and it is in Him and through His power that we can overcome the troubles in our life. I hope we will all remember that when those problems come. And when you start off with prayer, I guarantee it makes it go easier. I know that from personal experience. So let's uh, let's pray. Would you stand with me, and we'll we'll conclude. Oh, Father, we just, uh, we just thank you uh, for the lessons that we learned from uh, the people in the Bible and how they dealt with problems in their lives. So that, Father, that we can, we can deal with the problems that come in our lives as they come. Sometimes we don't deal with things, we don't deal with things, and we don't deal with things, and all of a sudden, a, a molehill is now a mountain. Yet if we dealt with the molehills, we could get them all done and we never would have to have a mountain. And Lord, we need to look to you, first of all, in all things. Each and every day of our lives, look to you for strength to, to, to continue on. For strength uh, to do whatever is needed to do. Knowing that one day we can spend eternity with you in paradise. And that alone should give us the incentive to, to continue on. But Father, as we uh, encounter problems within our lives, and we look to you, I know that you will help bring people on board. You will direct people to us, whether it's an individual or a group of people or the church body that can help bring resolution to problems in our lives. And so, Lord, we just want to love you and say thank you for all that you do and all that you are. And we just ask that you continue uh, walking with us each and every day as you help us to na navigate uh, our lives. And as we navigate the walks of our lives, Lord, uh, having you at the helm will help us to walk a more fruitful, more enjoyable life. And so, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and I just ask your blessings upon each and every person here. As we, as we leave the church, Lord, uh, let your blessings be with each person and help us, Father, uh, to share that blessing with others. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name and, and the whole church said, amen. amen. Have a great godly day. We will see you next week. and. Uh, and hopefully maybe we'll see some progress on the fence as well. Turn that off now. Turn it off.